All right, welcome back for draw number two of the 13th annual Cherry Blossom Bond Spiel, hosted by the Potomac Curling Club at the National Capital Curling Center. We are joining our second draw, uh, partially in progress. We are through a few rocks here in the first end. Uh, our featured game here on sheet B this time is throwing the red stones the team from Wauwatosa Curling Club, skipped by Potomac's own Jackie Barris, uh, along with her team, the rest of her team from Wauwatosa, John Housen, Josh Housen, and Chris Kandek. Uh, and their opponents throwing the Yellowstones are going to be out of the Pittsburgh Curling Club. Uh, team Ashford, skip Rich Ashford, Vice Ian Webb, second Russ Hoas, and lead Corinne Hoas. This is John Lawrence, back operating the cameras. Uh, this is Mike Sell, working commentary. I was on the first draw, and I remember now that we never actually introduced ourselves at any point. Uh, and also joining me for this draw is going to be uh, co-curler, teammate, however you want to refer to him, AJ Oyer. Hi. Thanks for the introduction, Mike. As Mike had said, we're joining this game in progress. We've got a red rock on the button, the center line guard by yellow right now. Quite a few guards out on top from both yellow and red. So it looks like to start Skip's Rocks here, Rich Ashford is going to be, looks like he's trying to take out that rock on the button.
Uh, that is indeed probably the plan. He can see oh, probably about half of it. I can see all of it from my seat, but I'm only on the other sideline. Looks like it's got a pretty nice line. It's definitely clear of the guard. He's going to curl in just He's going to get about a third of it out. and roll that stone out of the house. It's a pretty nice takeout. Right now we have Team Ashford sitting three. So with her first rock, it looks like Jackie Barris is going to try and draw right back in there um, to try and be a little, little behind more cover this time and be sitting shot rock. She just needs to be full eight foot for this to be shot. Jackie's shot is off. No sweeping yet. They're going to need it to curl over quite a bit to get behind cover. And it looks like it is through the house. After watching that line, it looks like Skip Rich Ashford is going to take a little bit less ice and go for a similar shot here. To try and draw in the button behind cover to make Jackie Barris's final rock a difficult shot. Uh, that's right. He's lying three, sort of all scattered around the house. Uh, forcing the single is essentially done at this point. Uh, Jackie has nothing in the house and only one stone left. Uh, so now he just wants to make that single as hard as he can by putting this rock as close to the button as he can. Yeah, At first glance, I think it's a little bit light. Looks like with that light, it looks like he's also going to be a bit narrow. If they sweep it, they could get a nice promote and still have four. They are going to touch that stone. No, they're not. And it's just outside the 12 foot. Does not appear to be a biter. So Jackie Barris is going to throw the hammer here. She needs to get this fully into the eight foot for one point. Wawatosa an actual curling club? Uh, yes, Wawatosa is a curling club in, uh, I believe it's Wisconsin. Uh, it's actually a town as well as a curling club. Uh, yes, Wawatosa is in Wisconsin. And Jackie Barris just threw the house again. So it's going to be three points for Ashford. The vices are looking right now just to see whether or not that one is biting. From the camera view we have, it looks like it's clearly not, but when you look from inside out, as our house cams do, you can see sort of under the edge of the stone, which will make it look further from the house than it is. We'll wait and see what they put on the board. Uh, our guess at the moment is three yellow. And they have, in fact, hung a four, so it that stone a, was in the house. It was a steal of four for Rich Ashford and his team from Pittsburgh.
Uh, interestingly enough, this isn't the first team from Wauwatosa, I think, to have come here to the Cherry Blossom. I was looking at the list of teams from previous years that had entered today. Uh, and a few years ago, one of the teams won an event, and their team, the team name was Wauwatomic. My assumption is that was a team partially from Wauwatosa and part from Potomac, as this one is here. Uh, but none of the names were the same. So we apparently have different members of the Potomac Curling Club with connections in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, uh, that brought them in for a Cherry Blossom Moss Field. Oh, we've got a uh, chat message from Jorg Mendelssohn asking, who's playing on sheet A? We have that for you. We, it'll take me a moment to get the sheets, or the teams, or the colors. Uh, we've got a team from Chesapeake and Plainfield, uh, Rick Balala, Linda Carubia, Kathy Jones, and Chuck Fetterman throwing the red stones, uh, and the yellow stones, our Curling Club of Virginia, uh, that is team Travis Hamilton, Sam Sparks, Patrick Walsh, and Jim Yeager. And at the end of the first, it was one red, so that is a steal of one for Rick Balala and his Chesapeake and Plainfield team. Jackie calling for a split house here. Looking for T-line weight on the opposite side of the 12 foot from the current shot rock. A uh, quick little whip around coverage to the other sheets. Uh, sheet C at the end of one is one red. And you're probably wondering who the heck is red. Well on sheet C, that is Team Temple. Jackie Temple, Neil Turner, Eric Cordobine, and Robert Sir. And they're playing against throwing the Yellowstones uh, team Black from the Potomac Curling Club, uh, Bruce Black, and they've got five, and I want to check and make sure I get the lineup they're actually playing with right now. Uh, Bruce Black, uh, lead today like is going to be Daniel Black, and they are playing with Howard Griffin and Harvey Chalmers, Bob Peltier being the one of the five not playing tonight. And over on sheet D, we've got team Buffington, another team out of the Pittsburgh Curling Club, uh, throwing the red stones and leading by three after one. That's Steve Buffington, Jim Meyer, Al Tarka, and Marie Rose. And they're playing the team out of the Potomac Curling Club, calling themselves Hanabi. Uh, and that is F.L. Etlin as the skip. Vernon Marr as the vice, Lisa Andrew throwing second, and Lori Piper throwing lead. And we will bring you more score updates from all of those games as we get them here. So getting back to our feature sheet here on sheet B. Yes, back to the game we care about. The <laughs> Team Ashford just took out the shot rock from the Wauwatosa Curling Club and drew in kind of behind cover depending on which way they want to come down. It looks like they have access to it down the center line. It looked like this was probably supposed to be a freeze, but the weight is going to be a little off. It's going to be a high guard. They're trying to sweep it in behind cover there. It looks like they did a good job so that they'll still have a clear shot at that shot rock in the back of the forefoot. Three. I didn't see the weight call, but I would imagine 
Okay, Team Ashford is going to try and put a center line guard here and try and guard up that shot rock. Yeah, my guess is that the call was probably something top house or above the house over that rock. Probably like top 12 would be ideal. Wait, this like one's going to go. In the house, trying to pull it in as far as they can behind cover. He's sitting too. Yep, that's great weight. It overcurls a little bit and goes more under the cover as opposed to covering their existing stone. But all in all, a pretty nice shot. close here trying to skinny past that red guard and they are going to crash on the guards potentially sweeping in they going to make it uh, he did get a biter out of it at least on the other side of the house actually roll to here would be nice uh, uh, you're normal here on our featured sheet, we do offer our wireless microphones to the skips. Uh, both of them this game did accept, so we were able there to listen in on Rich Ashford as he made the shot call. They're going to contact that redstone and move it back, leaving a biter, it looks like. Got the take oh, out there looking for, but maybe. doesn't look like they got the roll that they wanted. It might be in the house. It's tough to tell from our camera angle. Yeah, from, from my chair looking across the house, it looked like it was in. Looking at the overhead camera, I could see some white there, but again, that might be under the stone a bit. So it could be like last end where we all saw three and only yes, they saw yes, four. Three, still, five, still a good result yeah. for Oh, yeah, that's a fine result either way. We can switch up which microphone we're listening to, and we'll hear Jackie make this shot call as this stone comes down. They're going to hit the inside of that top yellow, roll toward the center. Jackie's going to sweep that yellow one out of the house. Not a perfect result, but a pretty efficient shot. Move the yellow out, move to the center. Pretty serviceable. It's going to make. Uh, Rich Ashford come after this stone. Get on, get on this right away to try and avoid over curling and jamming on their own. Looks like they are going to be coming across the rock. And, and just like you mentioned, jam. that's going to jam. That, jam yeah, that was going to go out. Rich the shooter at least stays in the house. They've got a clear shot at the red stone still. Not an optimal result, but the shot rock is still open, and it's only red sitting one. Not a bad situation for Team Ashford. All right. So Jackie needs to needs to protect their shot stone. She checks with the thrower, see if they prefer one handle. And we've got a birthday in the warm room. is on the way it's gonna be the line looks pretty good it looks like they're gonna get just over and leave it right there on the center line yeah I'd like to think that their original plan was to put that in the house in covering but it is covering it's high enough that you can definitely bend around it um, and actually because that crossed the center line a bit uh, the shot stone really not covered much at all. It's pretty exposed. It really just changes the angle that you'd come in. You'll have to throw a different handle. It would be covered pretty well if Rich was left-handed, but he is not.
Rich is going to need to be up weight here to get around this guard. It's really narrow. Looks like he is going to hit the guard. Hit the guard and move yeah, it he's back. He's just going to clear the guard out and, and it's gonna cover go up. Through the house. So the guard is out, but that red shot stone is behind better cover now. The yellow guard is right up the line from it. Definitely not where Rich was trying to put that. Jackie now has the first of her last two here. She's looking to just try to put more in the house now. A decent assortment of guards. Uh, York Mendelssohn wants to see some newscaster headshots. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have that set up. We have in the past had a sort of front-facing camera on the webcasting computer. Um, we just ran out of things that we could plug into the computer. We've got all sorts of just wiring and cabling just all over this table. It's kind of a mess. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't get you a, a broadcaster selfie or anything like that. Uh, Jackie Barris' shot is on the way. Looks like it's got a lot of weight. It's going to come in. It's going to touch she their stone. They have and move it back. Uh, they just got lucky there, and they both stuck around, although they are both accessible now by tapping that one back. They'll be able to see part of each stone from yeah. the hack. They can actually probably see just about all of this top one. There's definitely the potential there for a double as well. That's what I'm looking at. Oh, actually, looking over at the monitor, it's more covered than I thought it was. Yeah, but f I mean, it's not covered it's the not, way you'd want it's for not that double. Buried. Our, it's our camera being right up the center line doesn't quite get the view out of the hack that that the shooter's going to see. Even if the double isn't there, what is there is just a, a solid hit just off of nose and a roll over to sit under those guards. Yeah. Ah. Colin, Colin on the broom immediately. Looks like he this might be a little does have there. enough he space to clear guard. that guard. Just past He's the guard. He's gonna hit that red. Does not get, Doesn't the double, get the double, but, but he, he does. Clears it out, sits shot rock, leaving it pretty straightforward shot call for Jackie Barris here. She's going to want to take that out and stick around as long as she is mostly 12 foot on her roll here. She'll still be okay to yep. take two. All she has to do is leave this rock mostly in the house. The, the yellows around the fringe there, mostly not in the house at the moment. At the moment, we've got 25 viewers with us on live stream. We appreciate all of you joining in. And Jackie Barris' shot is going to take out the one that we weren't sure if it was biting or not, and it's going to leave a pretty clear call for one yellow. That's going to be another steal for the Pittsburgh rink, skipped by Rich Ashford. Uh, definitely a, a, a much better played end there uh, for the Barris rink. Um, just didn't quite get the result they wanted at the end. They did set up well to get their deuce, uh, just couldn't convert with the hammer. Uh, we'll see if they can't come back here in the third end. Uh, we don't have any second end scores posted for any of the other games yet. We'll keep you guys posted as soon as we see those starts yet put up. Sheet A is starting the third end. 
uh, but they have not posted the score after two. We did not happen to see it scored in that. This is just going to carry a little bit farther than they wanted, and by a little farther than they wanted, I mean over the back line and out of play. First shot here by Chris Kandik start this third end for the Barris ring. It's got good line for that first corner guard for the Hammer team, but it looks like it might carry a little too deep. A draw is not a terrible way to start an end, but you're not going to get a big end without getting up some guards. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Rich Asford just came right after this. Nope, oh, he's going to play Gonna play a little bit, uh, a little bit aggressive, and draw. Uh, this, the first instinct is it doesn't have the weight to get to the house. Looks a little light. It's a spinner, so hopefully that'll carry it a little bit further. But oh, the spinners actually stop sooner than they normally would. Like it's actually going to guard that corner guard right there. Uh, how's the ice tonight? First night of Childs was quicker than typical Potomac guys. Is it similar tonight? Uh, I can't say with much certainty. Um, I'm not out there with a stopwatch or anything. Um, it doesn't look like it's quicker than anyone was expecting. I mean, we did see the first rocks this end go through the house, and we're seeing this one actually looks like it's gonna carry through the house. So, actually, just from watching that, I would say maybe it is a little bit quicker than usual. Um, what I have noticed is that it does appear to be a little bit straighter than usual. Uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of curl. Um, and it did take a few stones in the first draw for the skips to realize that and sort of calibrate their room setting. So we're seeing all the other games in the shed, you know, moving into their third ends, but we're not seeing any twos on the board anywhere yet. Seems like the only one to post is sheet C, where team, the black rink took, looks like, four points that end to take to take a four to one lead over Jackie Temple's team. Oh, you're right, yes. Bruce Black did hang their score. Jackie's going for a takeout here for that yellow shot rock. This like it's right on, it's starting to curl away. Doesn't It'll really have much out. of a hit weight on it. It's got enough, I guess. It's gonna move that 
far enough to be it's only out. second shot. Looks like it's out counted for second shot. They do keep the shooter to stick around and take the shot back. Looks like Rich Ashford is just calling for a freeze on that shot rock since it's behind the T line. Not, not a takeout. Starting to curl pretty hard in there. Looked like he was going to be missing that shot, but it's curling right in there. Actually draws, freezes right down on it. Yep. It's a great That's shot. That's a really nice read of the ice there because when that rock started out, I agree, it looked like that was just going to go right up the center line, not anywhere near that red stone. But they waited for the curl, got all the swing they needed, put it right over there. Well executed shot. So Jackie's gonna try and follow him down to the exact same shot. Now this charge. one looks of similar weight, so they'll get a similar move on the end here. But I think she started it further to our right, so it may not get all the way over there to the yellow and red stone. It's curling. It looks like the weight's gonna leave it up. And it's just maybe just biting the top 12 foot which will probably prevent people from continuing to pile on that line. You could take, throw harder and hit, but it's gonna be hard to freeze in there now. But it looks like the vice Ian Webb is gonna be trying to draw in behind that new guard. This looks like it might be narrow. If it moves as much as the last shots have, it's been pretty close on that guard. They're sweeping to keep it straight. I do believe he is going to make some contact with that red stone. He is, but it looks like he was just a little light, so it will definitely push that red stone into being a biter now. Um, but you still have shot rock for it. Ashford uh, We got a second end posted over on sheet A. Uh, Travis Hamilton out of the Curlin Club of Virginia scored a one to make that game one to one uh, between Rick Balala out of Chesapeake and his team comprised of Chesapeake and Plainfield players. Uh, versus Travis Hamilton and his team out of the Curling Club of Virginia. So Ian Webb is going to go for that draw again with a little bit more ice this time. Seems like his line is again pretty similar. They're gonna need to be on this early. This time they'll be on their own. If they can just nose it, they can push it into the house. It is gonna turn and over onto the yellow, that. pushes it well through into the eight foot. To very the good. Yellow now, first and second shot. Very good promote. They'll take that. That's very nice, and it's saved right well above guarded. it to, to guard. I would say that's probably almost exactly what they were trying to do. Jackie Barris trying to draw right around. Starting to curl. Clearing one of these guards, not the worst outcome. We'll see if that's maybe what they get here. Like they hit the yellow, jam on the red. And kind of not affected. Didn't too actually much there. move the yellow stone as much as I thought she was going to there. So ended up promoted the red a little bit more into the 12 foot. There but might be something like a double there on the top two yellows 
not going to do anything about the one that's in the back eight, frozen onto that red. Looks like we're just going to see a, a draw to the probably a top four foot draw here. Looks like they're just trying to leave it right on the center line. <laughs> they're taking a lot of ice. They have been seeing a lot of curl taking this taking this yeah, I mean, if we line. get buried, we well, buried button area. Get Four. it buried on the button area. That's a Just tad easiest, easiest shot Move here. That's a good goal to have. All right. Whoa, got a curl. Looks like going out a little wider. Not seeing quite the same it's swing. Coming from the off round. of the corner guard pretty Stop well to going. come in, but. In, take it back, take it back. Ah. And he is yeah. going to put that just about onto the button. Very good shot. I don't think he saw the curl that he was expecting from the slightly narrower line that they'd taken the last few turps. But overall, he won't be too upset with that shot. Right, he didn't get that one to bury, but it's in the house. It gives, it does give Jackie Barris here a target. Um, she can hit that, roll under, bury herself, and then be able to get a second point with her second stone. Um, it's gonna take two pretty nice shots, basically a very well executed hit and roll, and then a, essentially a draw to the button. nice weight on this hit needs to come over a good bit but it should once it gets down there it's it doesn't over all the way it's, it's gonna hang gonna out there kind of wide hit the out. wrong side and spill spills out goes out of play all right so good news bad news the good news jackie you got rid of the shot rock uh, the bad news there were two more right behind that one So what shot do you think we'll see from Rich here? Probably a similar draw, but leave it maybe top eight foot this time. To yeah, he's got, I mean, the same call. Basically, just try to bury it on the left side of the button there is a good call. Or if you're not sure about the weight, you can just sort of leave it short on purpose, sort of top 12 even, just to plug up ways for Jackie to throw her draw through for, for one. Definitely got pressure on with these two shot rocks. Yeah. So putting a third point in is nice. Making a difficult draw for Jackie Paris is also nice. Looks like he's going to be taking a narrow line. They're going to sweep this right away. We've seen this curl a lot. Starting to hook over. Going to possibly promote if the weight's here, red into yellow. Red. And not the weight was yet. not quite there, so still two shot, two points for yellow as it stands before Jackie's hammer. Let's turn up Jackie's microphone here. Not gonna be the most complicated of shot calls. I mean, she just has to throw this into the house, get pretty close to touch the red circle there. Yeah. I caught the end of something where she said something about maybe to get three. I think there is okay, some <laughs> weird tricky shot where you can sort of run those yellows around a bit. I think she said she's just trying to draw the four foot. I'm surprised she's not taking a little bit more ice here since there seems to be a fine line between 
a pretty straight shot if you get out too wide and if you take that inside line that looks pretty sharp. That's true, and they only have to really touch the red. And they technically don't have to, but it's just a good, looks good like target to know if it's there or looks not. Looks like she's in good position. It's going to come down to the weight of this shot. You've yep. seen it curl there, yeah, but it it's looks got, like it's late. It looks like it's got enough room here to get around this top stone. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, it rubs it a little bit, but that's fine because the rub is going to slow it down just enough to sit in the top four. That's, that's going to be the shot stone. One point for Barris. One point for Barris indeed. So that'll um, be a score of, I believe, five to one for Rich Ashford. Yep. Over on sheet D, they have posted their score after two ends. And red team from Pittsburgh, Steve Buffington's rink, stole two points to take a lead of 5-0. And another score update we have for you from Sheet A. Um, the team from Chesapeake Plainfield, Rick Balula's team, took one in the third. So they are up two, three to, or they're up two to one now over Travis Hamilton and the Curling Club of Virginia. Jackie now for this end looking for what I think was supposed to be the sort of traditional center guard. Uh, this is gonna come off the center line and go pretty deep. Rich Ashford gonna jump on it. Sees the opportunity, he's got backing, he's gonna come down to it. He's gonna put a rock in the house that the other team won't be able to take out. Looks like he wants to freeze to it, maybe slightly tap it back, but you'd prefer to keep it around if you can for backing to save yours later, give him something to crash on. That's right, with the hammer, you love stones in the back of the house. Really, no matter whose they are, yours are fine, the other teams are fine. Looks like that shot is gonna be really light, and he's called off the sweepers to save their energy. That rock is just, that is just dead on arrival. I don't know if it was just a poor delivery. I missed the delivery. Um, maybe it been picked and just sort of caught on the ice. Didn't exactly see it. Now throwing the other handle on this one. Looks like we got a lot of weight again. It doesn't look like this one's showing any signs of stopping in the house. Yeah. Courtesy sweep from behind from Rich Ashford to try and slow it down. Yeah, I don't know much about these these uh, curlers from Wauwatosa that Jackie has, I guess you could say imported. Um, but um, just at first glance, you can definitely tell they're not the most experienced of curlers. Um, doesn't matter, you're here to have a good time, but definitely a bit of a skill differential here between uh, Rich Ashford's rink and the Wauwatosa Curling Club team. Sweep that one down, a little bit lightweight, but the line overall was really good, sitting just up, just top of the T line. Not a bad place to have that end up. Got backing behind it to prevent an easy takeout. There's still a chance of a jam. We now have a posting on sheet C after the third end. Uh, Bruce Black's team stole one point, so we have a score of five to one for Potomac's Bruce Black over Team Temple, skipped by Jackie Temple.
Rich Ashford calling for a draw in behind the guard just put up by Josh Hawson from Jackie Barrett's team. And Russ Hoss will do his best to draw right in there. Hopefully leave it behind cover and above the team. Yeah, the last Redstone, uh, not in a particularly poor position as a corner guard, uh, but I have to expect that a corner guard is not what the red team was looking for on that shot. Uh, Rich Ashford will gladly try to utilize this corner guard. Looks like this draw is going to have good weight, but maybe just not quite enough curl to bury under that guard. Yep. Very good shot. Looked like he had Ian Webb sweeping early to try and hold it, but it did not curl over as much as he was expecting. It's giving Jackie Barris a shot to take out. Yep. Rich Ashford successfully splitting the house. Now probably in a good position to score a two this end. Plenty of weight on this takeout. Needs to curl over a little bit more, but looks like it's going to. It's going to Ooh, flash it by just a couple enough. of inches. Maybe a little wide of the broom. Maybe a little more weight than Jackie was expecting. Um, maybe a few different things, but ultimately the result is a flash. And Rich Ashford now going to start putting up the guards. He's got his two. Now he's going to lock him in. They're sweeping it. Looks like it might be a little light, but we also have a score update for you on sheet D. The other team playing right now out of Pittsburgh, the Buffington Rink, uh, stole another two points in the third to take a lead of 7-0 going into the fourth. That was a very good guard put up there, making it really difficult to take a hit on that shot rock sitting just off of the fourth one. Yep, so they're gonna throw at the other one this time. That does not have takeout weight by anyone's standards. I think they're going for a draw, but it still didn't have draw weight. Just based on the handle is what's gonna make me think that oh, they that's true. for a draw. Yeah, that does um, make more sense. Based on the ice, I thought she was yeah. just throwing the takeout on the other yellow stone. Tough one, um, yeah, the weight wasn't there. It's actually a hog shot. I hope they weren't trying to take out on that. Well, I don't think they were trying to take out. I think she was hoping to just kind of draw down to it. No, I think that, that has spot. to be the call. I mean, I, I didn't really look at the handle or anything. I just looked at the broom and it, yeah. It seemed like, oh, they guarded one stone, we'll go for the other, which is... Either one is, either one is a good shot, yeah. depending on what you're trying to go for, if, if executed. Um, we just didn't get it over the hog line, so that shot's out of play. No, I actually like the draw there, because I think you really do need to try to steal here. You really don't want to... I mean, normally the forcing the hammer team to a single is a good result. Um, but when you're already behind by four, I think you want to try to get a one or two here on the steal end before you, uh, before you swing the hammer back. Gets that shot right on the line he wanted, but I think he put it a little deeper than he was hoping for, uh, leaving a potential double. Yeah, those are lined up for the double. The weight is all there. Unfortunately, this one was released with the wrong handle, and so it just curls right the opposite direction and flashes right over the button. discussion here between Vice Skip Ian Webb and Skip Rich Ashford as to which shot they're going to go for. 
I felt bad because they had play and play with tonight. Looks like they're actually going to go for a draw there in behind cover. Looked like he wanted it to be sitting, just biting the 12 foot. The weight might be a little light, but we're starting to see a lot of curl. It's going to over curl from what they're looking for. And it's definitely no hold up. Freeze on the, be right up on the red guard. Plug in the leak. Trying to listen in on a shot call here, not hearing much. Jackie may have put aside the microphone or something here. Maybe just not talking much. Maybe I just turned the volume up too late. This is going to touch that top guard. It looks like it's going to pick it out and roll over to guard the two yellow stones on the other side of the house. Gives them a clean clean path to Full 12, the yeah. shot, Rocco. All right. Ow. All right. Freaking here. Now watch. Oh, that's right. If you get too far, and it won't go. Yeah. It was. I kind of forgot. Now we're hearing Jackie a bit, but you I'm actually trying actually to listen to Rich. Get, you can see quite a bit of that. The only problem I have with that is that if we hit it. it looks like Rich is just going to try awesome and replace right. that Are they backwards? guard that, that they had. I think we've got the microphones backwards. I think that's the problem. <laughs> it's the easiest way to remember it is if you have them backwards, just to keep it exciting. The TSN channel. So that's looking like a good line, but a little bit light. They Sweeping all they the can to get line. it over the hog. If it's over, it's a great shot. Makes it going to take a lot to get around that guard. And, Get into the shot, Rock. Yeah, just uh, towel sweep. Slower. <laughs> 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 Actually, we are a little precarious because if she would happen to sink one in here. <laughs> no, I know, that's all we can do. No! 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 Oh, oh. <laughs> Hearing some audio cross traffic from another sheet there. We're also just getting some interference or feedback or something on Jackie's microphone. Um.
You did hear Rich, though, say that would be a interesting predicament if she's able to bury one here. If she can draw around that guard that Rich just threw, um, that stone would be relatively tricky to get to, and it could end up being a pretty good steal. This does have the room to get around. Oh, it's going the other direction, so it definitely, oh. Yeah. Maybe they need to try to let that cross the face of that red and tap that one over, just like that. That's one way to take, to be sitting shot they, Yeah, here. they've gotten to the center of the house, but that that's not where they want to be. Wide open for the last shot here, for, for the hammer here for Rich Ashford. And he's got the broom down to just come down, knows that straight out the back and sit for. Yep, he said, uh, I imagine what he said uh, was what a lot of skips, uh, a lot of skips say in this scenario. Uh, it's a two part phrase. The first part being, nice shot, you know, gentlemanly game or friendly game. Uh, but then the second part of that is always take it out. You know, when your opponent throws a nice shot, the response to that usually is get it off of there. He might be a little bit wide. He's yelling at the sweepers to get off. They're not coming. There He's they go. He's trying to keep it on the nose there. There they go. They've got the hit, and that is going to be four for Rich Ashford. High fives around the Ashford rink for a well-executed end. That's going to put the score here on our feature sheet at 9-1 to one for Rich Ashford. Can we get some updates on the other sheets? Um, we definitely can. Let's see. We just finished the fourth here. The other games all still look to be in their fourths. Oh, actually, no. We have a fourth hung on A. Uh, Rick Balala out of Chesapeake with his Chesapeake and Plainfield team uh, stole a three in the fourth end to take a lead five to one over Travis Hamilton out of the Curling Club of Virginia. Uh, all the other scores are, I believe, still as they were last reported. Uh, C and D sheets both still finishing their fourth ends. So, Jackie's first stone on the way. It's curling pretty hard here. It looked like it was going to set up to be a nice corner guard. It's going to have good guard weight, but it's going to be well off to the side. It's a very, very deep corner, uh, very, very, very wide corner, corner guard. guard. Yes, stretching the definition of corner. If you're drawn behind there, it's going to be very difficult to get it out, but probably easy to out count. Looking like a good center guard here from lead Corinne Hoas. So it might be over curling just a little bit to uh, to the corner, but they swept it in to be a biter, so I'm sure they'll be happy with that in the 12 foot. Over on sheet C, we're about to have an update. Jackie Temple throwing her hammer in the fourth end. It is on the way. She's trying to make a tight raise here to get shot. 
and she gets to touch the four-foot circle, but she rubs on an opposing stone and bumps that one up. So that is going to be one yellow for Bruce Black's team. And Bruce Black is going to take a six, yes, yeah, six to one lead through four ends. And it looks like we're also ready for F.L. Etlid to throw the hammer over on sheet D. So I'm going to get up and take a look at that. Wow. My first thing I notice when I look over there is I see the eight, nine guards in play. <laughs> Followed by two red stones and one yellow stone in the 12 foot that from my angle, I can't tell what is actually shot. It looks like it's probably one like red, but red. it could be both of them. But I imagine that what FL is trying to do here is just draw toward the center, actually. No, I think she's actually going to try to make that bump up the middle and try to get a two. Definitely a good play. Down seven to nothing. She could use a two. It's there. It's a, it's a good, good call. I like it. Very aggressive call from the skip, FL. And interestingly enough, of all the guards that are up, the center line is completely clear, so the shot's all there. Stone is on the way, but it looks like she might be a bit wide. Oh, it's turning the wrong direction or something. And that is not going to affect any of the rocks in the house. And so we'll see what result they put up. Back Looks like they're saying one red. And then they're going to sort of, looks like they've tapped two red stones. So that is going to be another steal of two for Steve Buffington uh, over FL Etlin to take a nine to nothing lead. Back to our feature sheet on sheet B. We had an exchange, a couple people just taking out the shot, shot rock at the top 12. Um, and then Rich Ashford's team took it out and rolled over to the other side of the 12. And Jackie Barris decided to get out of the takeout game and tried to draw in, but left it, her team left it a little high. It's a corner guard on the empty side of the sheet. Now Russ Hoas is gonna try and come down right behind that guard that was just put up. Weight looks good, didn't quite get in behind cover, but it's just biting the 12 foot on the center line. Jackie Barris is gonna take it out, um, but if she hits it on the nose, she won't actually be shot rock here, or she won't be in the house here. Jackie managed to take that shot out, but did not stick around into the in the house at all. It's still just up top.
Ian Webb tries to tries to draw in behind the new guard. A little light, a little over curled, and sits right next to it. So Jackie Barris is going to try and draw in behind these two stones coupled together. It's going to be close. Looks like it's going to clear the guards. And if it can stop in the house, it's got just a bit too much and is all the way through. Rubs pass, rubs those guards out top, but the weight was good. Stops right on the top button. Not quite behind cover. Potential takeout here. They can curl around it, get it just to this left of center, and they can hopefully stick around behind cover. Looks like the shot's gonna be a little narrow. Again, this time it hits the guards, splits the guards, leaves the yellow guard up there, but the shot rock and the other red guard are split to the opposite side, leaving only the lone yellow guard in the center. as well for Rich Ashford. It's close. It's close, Ian. You hear him calling it, saying it's close. I'm talking about the weight, he thinks the weight's pretty good. You're starting to see it swing there. It's hooking real, it's hooking a lot down that line. And a great shot. Leave it well behind that guard. And just up, just up above the top of the forefoot. Um, it's really actually, we hit our nose. If we hit it, no, that's fine too. Looks like Jackie's calling for a takeout of the shot rock there on the top button, saying if she's a bit narrow, try and sweep it on to the second shot so that she can just poke that out, get a little rub, and then still hit the hit both, that's awesome. Yep, she said if going for one, if you can hit both, that's awesome. Oh, that's not the problem. <laughs> Actually. Okay. I'm not sure that she can see both here. Uh, yeah, she hell? can't see both. John. I think going for one is doable. Aim for the first one. We'll run the first one back and take them both out. Mm. Oh, ah. 
calling for a run back double. Uh, it's an interesting shot call by Jackie here. Less is gonna have to come you don't, that side, she's going to be running back at yellow unless she's hoping for a triple takeout. Yeah, I mean, if she makes the raise right now, onto the double, the, four. The, the, the one that she runs back is going to still be the in the house. The goal is like an angry, majestic war dragon. I just think I, did you hear angry, majestic war dragon or? I, that is in fact the phrase I heard and I know a thing or two about angry, majestic war dragons. And this curling stone does not resemble one of them. Yeah, that's. <laughs> this is. Oh, it's gonna be a little light over curl. Well, she. I'm gonna go ahead and just call guard. that plan B. She peeled the guard and has a shot at the double now. Yeah, um, and she did. She did manage to avoid crashing onto her corner guard, but did not manage to take out um, any of the yellow stones. So we'll go ahead. We'll just assume that that was plan B. She peeled the guard, and now she can uh, she can bring in the angry majestic war dragon uh, with a with a subsequent stone. Um, would you really bring in an angry, majestic war dragon for the hammer here? Uh, no, probably not. Uh, without without any way to get a multiple, I think just just cut it. Yeah, you know, hit shot to, rock on the nose yeah. and get your one. That'd That's be the, probably be the recommended call, but I, I guess mean, you can't really control a majestic angry war dragon. That is true. Uh, and just as as someone who uh, you know likes to throw takeouts. If just looking down the sheet, I just see two rocks like that, and I go, let's go for the double. And never mind that it's only taking out the first two out of four. There's yeah. still that thing in the back of my hands, head saying, throw the double. Yeah, A uh, double is always nice, but you don't want to take a double and spill out and still leave them with two when you could just take out the shot rock and take one. Oh, right, yes. The, the more prudent call is something that gets you a point and definitely doesn't give the other team four. Looks like we're looks like we're gonna go for a center line guard here. And curling pretty hard there at the end. Ooh, big swing but at the end, but settles in pretty nicely, I think. It's there, it's high. Uh, I think there's still the opportunity for Jackie to come at this with about what do you, probably about hack weight. She could yeah, poke yeah. it out of there and be sitting shot rock. Hack is enough. And it's a lot of ice. She maybe, maybe back line here. I um, mean, you don't need to take it out. You just need yeah. to get it off the button. So back line is enough. I don't know if it's enough for that line. I, I've just been seeing a lot of shots move a lot, and I, if I were throwing this, I would just be terrified and have no idea where to put the broom. Um, I imagine that the Skip and Vice have a better idea where to put the broom, considering they have been, they have been in fact playing in this game for four ends now. Well, whether or not they have a better feel, the broom, ha broom has been placed, and the shot is being delivered. Uh, looks like we're looking at bumper here. Maybe bumper's maybe a little pretty more good than weight bumper. if it gets that swing. It's starting to come so over, but it's not going to get to the nope. shot stone. We're going to see a through the house. Looks like another four points for Rich Ashford. That's what I'm seeing. So that's gonna put us at. And hands are being extended. 13 to one, yep, and they're shaking after five here. Team Barris just not able to just put a string of made shots together. A few decent ones, a few you know nice draws and nice guards. Just not able to get it all together all at the same time. Um, but a team uh, of not the most experienced curlers without the most experience playing together, which is another big factor, um, against a, 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 a you know a skip that I've definitely seen around at a lot of bond spiels, Rich Ashford. Um, definitely knows what to do out there on the ice and will will punish you for making mistakes. It looks like they shook, but it looks like they are still going to continue playing. They've got plenty of time left here on the ice. Um, 
Rich is giving Jackie some pointers right now. Uh, but as we're getting ready to start what looks to be the sixth end, um, it's unclear to me whether they are just playing for fun now or if they're continuing. We'll I, give you I saw handshakes and I've seen, I'm seeing this sort of... Uh, I'm guessing they are playing for fun now as the lead <laughs> just through with no broom. Yeah, um, I think this is just a, the Rocks have to get down here, so play another end. Um, I think it'll be like what we saw last game where they played the sixth sort of on the record. Red scored, but not nearly enough for it to matter, and they continued. They just yeah. made the concession more official at that the, point. The 12 ender is a very rare event. Um, I don't think there have been too many of those recorded. I mean, they've got the hammer. They can get an eight. They'll be down 13-9. They can get the force to be down 14-9. And then with the hammer again, they can get a six so and win 15-14. So here's, here's, the question. <laughs> here's the question for you, Mike. If you take an eight-ender, how upset are you for shaking and registering your first eight-ender in a bond spiel and an end that doesn't really count? Um. I don't know, and, I, and I, I joked about that last end, too, when I saw them sort of talk about, okay, this game is pretty much over. Let's throw them back, though. And I said, okay, they're down 10. What if they get an 8? Like, are they then going to be upset that they shook already? Um, but we can give you some let's a score update from <laughs> Sheet A, which we, again, have seen Rick Belula steals this is the third end of steals in a row um, and he stole two points this time so it's a score of seven to one for Rick Belula out of Chesapeake Plainfield over Travis Hamilton representing Curling Club of Virginia. Bulala. Bulala. Thank you Mike. I apologize. It's okay. I'm not bothered but he might be. Hopefully he's not listening to this. If he is right now Keep up the good work. Rick. It would be unusual for him to be listening from out on the ice. Uh, and and I also would not be surprised if he doesn't get that a lot. So, Our other sheets on sheet C and sheet D are both finishing up. We're seeing finishing up their fifth the and second to last shot on C, getting ready for the hammer. And there's still a couple more shots on sheet D. Our speculations about what they do in an eight ender can be put to rest. Uh, Jackie's first stone is a high guard, so they're they're looking at a seven this time, not an eight. Oh, uh, there's. Uh, but that is a draw under a guard, which is a pretty nice shot there. Looks like Rich is calling for the freeze right on top of it, um, which I guess with the angle you could freeze to it and still be shot. You can, and you can. What you can do is sort of rest yours against it on the corner, whether you're shot or not, and then use yours as the takeout target. But you're bound down by a bunch. Let's say you want to try to get three. So Jackie just calling for a draw behind all the yellow cover here. She's got plenty of ice. Yeah, we're getting some noise on the red team skips microphone. Um, could be just the way she's wearing it. Maybe her hair is rubbing on it or something. Not sure what's going on there. It's going to be real close. Uh, just off the yellow guard. The weight was really good. Stops on the button. Probably would have been back eight. Um, but you didn't want to sweep too much to avoid sweeping that out.
And I'm not hearing much of Rich. He may have actually taken his off. He's, uh, looks like he's calling for a freeze here. We'll just go ahead and just turn those off. We're not getting any. Rich calling for the freeze here. Um, weight's a little low, a little light, so it over curls. Just kind of joins the other yellow guard up a couple feet off of the 12 foot. All right, we've got a fifth end score posted on sheet C. Jackie Temple scores one with her hammer in the fifth uh, to bring her total up to two, but Bruce Black still has six, so that is Bruce Black from Potomac over Jackie Temple from I forget where. We'll get that for you. Uh. <laughs> and we also have a posting on sheet D after five. F.L. Etlin scored three points with the hammer to close the score to make it nine to three. Uh, Pittsburgh, Steve Buffington's team over Hanabi, F.L. Etlin's team. The game on sheet C is the most competitive right now. Should we switch over to that? Um, not the worst of ideas, John. Uh, we've got a, what, a 9 to 1, a 13 to 1? No, it's about 11 to 1 or something. Or no, it's 7 to 1, but they're still playing with 6. Yeah, let's go ahead and cut over to C, John. Switch over, I'll show you guys. Jackie Temple versus Bruce Black here on sheet C. So yeah, I mean his current score is six to two. Sorry for any Rich Ashford or Jackie Barris fans, uh, but these teams did essentially shake at the end of last end. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, the end they're currently playing it doesn't count for much anyway. Uh, but we do have over here on sheet C, uh, Jackie Temple, Neil Turner, Eric Cordobine, and Robert Sir throwing the red stones, Bruce Black, Harvey Chalmers, Howard Griffin, and Daniel Black throwing the yellow stones. Uh, Bruce Black currently leads six to two through five ends. Uh, but Red currently sitting with two stones in the house. With three having been delivered as we go to the first the first second stone. Howard Griffin delivering with his broom, using it as a stick. Not sure what's going on with that. Maybe I'll the guard. have to find a story with that. I think Howard has uh, been having a long season. He's been doing a little bit of broom of stick curling. I know last weekend he had a long weekend. I believe they had five games with Bruce Black up in Canada at a bond spiel. That um, is correct, actually. He was on the team, or on a team, uh, competing in the Gordon International between uh, the Grand National Curling Club, the East Coast of the United States. And I think the Gordon is the one against Quebec. It might be against Ontario, but there's two internationals between the GNCC and provinces of Canada. Um, that one was in Canada, and the United States won in Canada, uh, which does not happen often. I know he was proud. I saw his, his winner pin that he had brought back. Uh, and Bruce and uh, I think Daniel Black were both on the team, making I think Daniel Black the third generation of that family to bring yep. home a Gordon medal. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was I think it was this same team um, with Bob Peltier not being able to play last That's weekend. That's correct, right? Bob Peltier is the sort of skip of record and the reason we still have an invite. 
uh, but he was unable to attend, so the team was able to play without him. So Jackie Temple does have a stone in the house. Looks like she's just drawn around this biting yellow stone right now. Haven't been watching too much of their ice. Um, she's moving the broom over, so it looks like it must be running fairly straight to get behind cover. Probably can't see behind that column. It does not make a very good window. It's fine. I can see everything on sheet C except, like, the house. <laughs> and it's curling over earlier. She's this sweeping, trying to get it by this guard. If they sweep hard, it's going to be real close. It's going to touch the yellow, but it's going to keep rolling. And it promotes the yellow, still biting the 12 foot there. And it looks like they're out counting. Uh, I, I think the yellow one is most in the house, but <laughs> none of them are particularly taking convincing control of the house. So. Marvels of modern location. I'm surprised that we don't have geolocation on each of these to let us know which one is shot rock at any point in time. I'm a little surprised, even when you watch curling events at things like the Olympics and the Briar, that they haven't coming up with some little device you can just put in the pin that just sort of sends out a laser and tells you which point it found first. It's sort of like a LIDAR kind of thing, and then that'll tell you which stone is shot when you measure with it. Um, but every time I bring that up, someone points out, you know, every curling club would want one, and you know, how many curling clubs are there? And then once you have one, you don't buy another one. So it would be a very small market for a device like that that would only really only have explicitly one use to measure stones on a curling sheet. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's a way you can make that a limited use type type activity. Yes, so you, you could, could build in the battery and make it unchangeable like an iPhone, so that you have to buy one every year or so. Um, it would be neat at least for TV coverage to have. So you could have sort of, instead of a, a referee come, you know, toddling out to the ice and then to, use to the measure. big clunky caliper thing, um, you know, something that you can just put down and press a button and some lights flash. It's good TV. Although did you catch that uh, women's world, the uh, USA versus Canada match where the referee came out to measure the two stones and there was a, a draw between the two stones for a blank. I believe that was in the fifth end of that game. Uh, yes, that was. They were, I think it was actually a draw. Was it actually, was it for a blank? It was a blank, yes. It was, it was for a blank, a blank. For, it was the, a for shot stone, right. I was, I was remembering it as a draw for second and so it was going to be one point, but no, you're right. Very it was interesting. A, uh, a blank and with <laughs> rocks in the house. Tried to go for a tap back for two, tapped back the shot stone to the exact same spot as the shooter when they were measured. Exact same distance, I suppose. Exact same spot would be would, difficult. Would violate quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is clearly overrated in physics. So I got a takeout coming down here from black rink. Gonna tap out that center line biter and both shots are gonna roll out. Yep, red currently sitting looks like shot up at the top of the house there. Looks like yeah one sh one rock one red right now. Jackie. Probably gonna try and draw in behind these. Yep. Team Temple here looking to get uh, at least their deuce here. Two points would bring them to within two with two ends to play. 
So that would be not a terrible spot to be in. So it looks like we do have a final result to bring you on sheet A. Um, the teams have left. And we have a s posted score of seven to one after five ends. They did not post anything after a sixth end. So. I imagine that if there was a score in the sixth, it was probably just more reds um, or maybe one or two yellow. Uh, in one or I'm two yellow, yellow might still have shook there. I doubt it. Based on the pace of play, I'm guessing that they may have just shake, shook after five because I don't believe they were that far uh, ahead of anybody. They were, well, but the, all these other games are in their six, so That's they very well could have true. just finished their six, which I think they did. Or maybe they shook during the six, which is why yeah. the score was posted. That could make sense. But that is Rick Balala, Linda Carubia, Kathy Jones, and Chuck Fetterman for the Chesapeake and Plainfield team uh, defeating Travis Hamilton, Sam Sparks, Patrick Walsh, and Jim Yeager out of the Curling Club of Virginia uh, as our first two teams back in the warm room after their game. Although with the temperature outside today, it's not too bad in the ice house today. No, probably Ooh. not. Today, just skinning by that high guard um, to guard the shot rock. It's an interesting call. I guess it does prevent the takeout of the shot rock, but you only really need to be full 12 foot here to be to have the hammer or to have the shot rock. That's so it looks like true. It looks and like Bruce Black yeah. is just going to try and draw in behind all of that cover. Yep, P. Touching the eight foot ring is a nice goal to have. It's sort of a stretch goal. You don't really even need to get there to get your point here. I mean, of course, his goal goal is to just put this on the pin because when you're just drawing for a point that's what you're really always trying for but he's got four feet in any direction <laughs> that he could miss the pin by oh, yes i did not actually see that this was the was the hammer i believe oh it's not actually i believe it's his uh, first. Is, this, is this his first then i th i was gonna say i'm pretty sure it's the hammer but i see another yellow at the other end so this is his first unless that yellow is from sheet B, but I don't think it is because it's over there. Yeah. This is Bruce Black's yep. first. Yeah, because there's a red left one, as well. So this one is for first. each team. So top eight here would be probably ideal. Give them the chance to draw in behind, but don't give them anything to hit and roll. Oh, sweep them by. It's not curling as much as he expected. Can be right on the T line. Great but draw. Exposed. Wait, almost straddling the T line. They're gonna. S Jackie is gonna be able to see most of it. The question here is, can she execute the takeout in such a way that she can roll under the cover? A hit, hit and roll behind cover is nice. It leaves you sitting too. But you almost, I mean hitting, you really want to stick around anywhere, but you want to make it as difficult as possible for Bruce here to, to draw down. And so they so have put the rocks away over here on sheet B. Uh, they stopped hanging scores starting with the fifth. Um, but so that is a score of, on the board, nine to one uh, for Rich Ashford, Ian Webb, Ross Hoas, and Corinne Hoas over Jackie Barris, John Hausen, Josh Hausen, and Chris Kandick. Uh, they're gonna be here in the warm room as well. So we've got Chesapeake Plainfield and Pittsburgh, Rich Ashford as already in with wins this draw and our games here on C and D still in progress, both in their sixth ends.
Uh, they're going to flash the takeout attempt there, though. From where the broom was placed, it looked like she needed about backline weight to make that hit, and it was much more than that. Yeah, she threw more like hacker bumper, bumper which, was, which was also a good weight for that shot, um, but more than she had set herself up for the broom for, yeah. I think, I think something like a hacker bumper was what you were looking for there, just to make sure you got the stone out and got a little bit of a roll. But, yeah, definitely took too much ice for the weight or threw too much weight for the broom. Maybe this Temple team is still uh, getting used to the Potomac ice. And that's quite possible here. Uh, Bruce Black could have some semblance of, I guess, a home ice advantage. So they're sweeping, trying to bring it in. They just need to be, uh, everybody's out here sweeping now to bring this in as oh, far as they can. Three brooms on this to try to drag this down. More to drag it over the shot rock, I think, than to try to drag it. Oh, it doesn't matter because they have the hammer. Yep. No, so they were they actually yeah. trying to drag that to be second shot. They didn't get there. So that's going to be one more for Bruce Black, which will put his team up 7-2 to two as we go into the seventh end. Oh, a very nice... Double was just made over on sheet D, which I think is going to be, well, yellow doesn't have the hammer, so. Yeah, red, red still has the hammer, but that'll be the last, the only one shot to come on sheet D. First guard there for Bruce Black's team. Great line, but just a little light. Looked like it died on the hog line. So Jackie Temple's first down goes into the house. Bruce Black is just going to call for the takeout here. He's got the lead. We're closing in on the end of the game here in the seventh end, and so he is just going to try to shut it down. He's going to, if there is a red rock in play that he is allowed to take out, he is going to do so, I believe. It looks like he's stuck around as well. Here comes Steve Buffington's final stone of the sixth over on sheet D. Sweeping hard. 
He's going to take out a yellow. He's going to nudge yellow, his own stone up a little, but I... Still a steal of one. It is. Yep, they're still discussing. I haven't cleared the house, but it seems pretty straightforward of one yeah, yellow. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the discussion was the score of the end. I think it was just the vice and the skip talking to each other. Are we going to keep playing here? FL scores one, she's visibly talking about shaking. And there we go, we have handshakes. Uh, with that one in the sixth though, that is gonna be Steve Buffington, Jim Meyer, Al Tarka, and Marie Rose out of the Pittsburgh Curling Club with nine points. And FL Etlin, Vernon Mayer, Lisa Andrew, and Lori Piper with four. Uh, Buffington out of Pittsburgh is going to advance. Uh, FL Itland's team, Hanabi, is going to fall into our second event. <laughs> but here on C, where the cameras are pointing, we've got, this is, uh, so this would be uh, Eric Cordobine's stone. And he does put it into the top of the house, fully into the eight foot circle, but not under any cover. Howard Griffin looks like, yeah, he's, looks like he's going after it here. See what you were talking about there with his broom as the uh, as the push. He's not actually using the standard Ooh, he attachment on it. He is just using didn't really get the much rotation on that. No, he brush did. head. And, and he's got this. He's all over the takeout, but it's take out, gonna jam. Takeout and a jam, but leaves him shot. It does. And here you might hear over us the. Tepid applause, because only one person came out into the warm room. <laughs> People were all excited about the teams coming off the ice, and then they didn't actually come through. And now I think they're going to sort of straggle through and not going to get anything, because people gave up on them. Oh, well. then is able to remove the Yellowstone and stay in the top of the house to now lie two. As we move up to Harvey Chalmers' first stone, he's gonna go after this just like Howard just did. This is over curling and is going to crash on the yellow guard. Run it back, kiss off of the redstone. So the reds now not in line with each other anymore, but still both in the house. Turner Stone on the way. Looks like a draw. Drawn in there be up. Oh, nope. nope. Looks it's like it's a little light. It's gonna, gonna be a settle off a little guard. bit short. It is the line, be was, line was great for getting buried behind that yellow guard, but just a little light there. Yep, it's gonna sit up in front of the house. 
uh, but not in front of anything in particular. Um, just just give them something to draw behind, but at the moment, uh, just that button to take out. Harvey's going to come after another red stone. He's going for that side stone. Going the line for a and handle and here. Maybe behind cover. No chance at a crash like on the last stone. He's got all of the target. Ooh. And that's right all on he's the got. Nose. Right no on the roll nose. at all. So I believe the redstone's still closer. It looks like it's closer to the eight foot circle there. So Jackie Temple, I think, is calling for the takeout on the yellow to get her two back. Now, nope, she's going for the draw. Neither one a particularly bad option. Um, Removing the yellow gives you a chance to then roll back to the middle, or just taking out that yellow stone gives you a chance to maybe bring some biters into play or something. Uh, they don't have any biters, though. They are already sitting first shot, so just drawing for second as well is probably a easier play. Comes down, comes down to your... This one has some nice weight. Sure Takes a big it. swing at the end. Good. And sits just in the back of the eight foot. Um, very well buried by the two guards out top. This line, it looks like Bruce playing a hit on one of those red stones. Could be maybe a heavy draw. It's not a ton of ice. Yeah, with the ice and the way we saw that last shot curl, I'd have to imagine this is a takeout. Unless it really did pick and that's where all that curl came from. I mean, I could see this for this same line also being maybe something like back line weight and coming across to the, the higher of the two reds. This is going to touch that guard. It does, oh. it just rubs and just oh. Just rubs and misses both shots. Enough both that it couldn't still also touch the back red. So red sitting one and two, looking to protect those two now and then throw the hammer for three. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is second to last shot. First, first skip rock for Jackie Temple here. Stone is away. Sweepers are on it pretty early. The way they're on it, it looks like they're hoping to put it in the house. Yeah, the line is fine. It's going to be in front of their redstones regardless. I think they just want to make sure that this is also going to be a counter. And it yeah, is. It's going to come down. Shot. It's going to be just straddling the team line the a little bit. A little bit line. back, uh, fully back button. Um, and it's hard to tell how exposed that is. You'd have to think that if you can hit this pretty much on the nose, there's a double there for Bruce Black to take out two. Oh, yeah. And only, only give up two points here. 
they definitely wanted that more in the top of the house. Um, Bruce Black's got the angle here. This shot is away here. Stone is away. People in the warm room are looks saying they should be sweeping it. Now they are. It looks like it has curled early oh, and they weren't ready. He is it's on. It's going to hit the guard. On the guard. And it's going to be a shot for Jackie here to draw into. She can make almost, four now. Yeah, she's she got a. Got she a shot can. for four as long as she is mostly, you know, almost in the eight foot here. She doesn't need to be touching white to get the four. No, she doesn't. And if she gets the four, this will be a seven to six game going into the eighth end. So this is a huge swing in the game. She'll still be down one without the hammer, but it's diff It's a lot easier to steal one than say four. I would agree. Yeah, and especially coming off of, you know, when you've got two points, if you can take four, yep. the second to last end, your spirits are going to be high. You're going to have a lot of faith in your shot. And so. the sweepers don't really have to worry about line here. They just have to make sure this gets to the house. Wait only, they're just but they're still the sweeping hard. It's looking. It's going to break the threshold of the house and, and just, just touch just the eight-foot eight circle. Foot. That is going to be four red by my view. Make it seven to six. Well, the score has been hung, and it is four for Jackie Temple. So it's seven to six. Bruce Black still leads going into the eighth by one point and has the hammer. Yes, Bruce Black coming home with the hammer and a one point lead. We're gonna see a we're gonna see a pretty aggressive end here from Jackie Temple. We're gonna see probably a pretty conservative end from Bruce Black. He just needs to make sure he has a place to put the hammer. Uh, so it's gonna come down to which team uh, sort of can sort of impose their will on the other team. Which team can make make their shots and maybe get a lucky miss from the other team because. The two strategies will be diametrically opposed from each other. Jackie needs a First steal, so she's going to look for. Seems to be a little deep. Looks like it's going to be in the house, which will play out well for Bruce Black. Give him the shot to just take it out right away. It will, and that's the way this is going to go. Uh, Jackie's going to try to put up guards all over the place, give herself a chance to bury one that can't be removed. Yeah. Bruce Black just wants to keep the sheet as clean as he can to give him the easiest chance to score with the hammer. This is alternate throwing lead Daniel Black. And he has missed the shot. He was a little light and it's just over curling. He was very light. This is going to be a draw. Yeah, this is going to actually stick around wow. in the back of the house. Um, wow. I guess that's one way to miss a takeout is to leave it in the back of the house as a biter. With it. But I, it's hard to imagine a worse yeah. shot except for a guard. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, unless the... It's an extreme miss there for sure. Unless the call was a draw, but I don't know why that would have been the call when the, the, just the clean peel seems like such a better option. So they're going to give Robert Sir the lead for Jackie Temple here a chance to guard this shot rock up right here on the center line. Jackie will be happy to keep putting up guards, especially if she's got the, especially when she has the shot rock here. Gonna over curl a little bit. Yep, but this is good guard weight right up in the 
two range, but it does over curl off of the center line. Um, Bruce is gonna have Daniel take another whack, I think. Yeah, it looks like he's setting up for a takeout. Looks like we got some more weight coming out this time. Yep, definitely a better push out of the hack. Although it looks like he may have pushed too much. We're gonna need it to curl over there. You're starting to see some curl now. Here it comes. I think they're gonna get a little contact here on this stone, or they're gonna get at least like a third of it. Yep. They got it. And Bruce sweeps it out the he back. Sweeps it out the back. Well yep. done on the takeout. Leaves his own stone in the house. Jackie looking for a hit with a slight roll into cover here. But still, although they made the hit, that still wasn't exactly the shot they wanted. They wanted to the shooter to get out of play also. Right, either out of play or over into the wing where Jackie would not be able to use it to help her steal up the center. Definitely right that they were looking for more of a peel than a nose hit. Looks like her shot is over curling here. They're going to tick, tick, and they're going to tick the yellow as well in the back. Looks like they might stick around. I can't, can't tell. It looks like it's just going to be a tripping stone in the back. Yeah, it looks like it is not in the house, but still in play, not fully over the back line. Maybe someone could use it as a way to freeze on or something, but probably not going to matter. This end is going to just get closer and closer to the forefoot as it progresses. Could make things ugly later in the end if when it comes time and people are trying to clear out. There's a jam potential right there. Ooh, Bruce yes. waving off his sweepers completely here. This is drawing in. Looks like it's going to be behind there they cover. Go. They're well. ready to bury it under the guard. Top, Pretty good top sweep. eight foot behind the guard. That's a good spot to be. Jackie's setting up to try to use the other stone to make this a double. A double, that's what I'd like to see here. Nice, pretty flat double here. Uh, angle, angle is there. Yeah, there, there's maybe a foot or two, closer to two. Well, you could probably fit about one and a half rocks in between there, uh, you know, top to bottom separation. But I'm gonna stop talking about it and watch it come in. And they're sweeping. There's the top one. It rolls over, hits the back one. They tapped it, but they not enough to call it a double, but enough to put it out from under the guard, which probably yeah, was a good, you know, falls in the category of good enough. This can definitely be used to to keep the pressure on here because they can promote theirs in or take it out from the other side depending on what Howard's shot does here. Looks like they're going for it. Trying to guard that up. Yeah, Bruce just trying to make sure that even if he's not shot at the end, he's not, if he doesn't lose that stone he already has, giving up more than one is gonna be tough, but this is Howard gonna come in, in a little heavy. heavy for a guard. And it is gonna touch that red in the back, maybe? No. Uh, just over curls for that rock in the back and goes just over the back line. Uh, I thought that was gonna be our chance to use that stone. I was a little excited. Stone lives to die another day. Sweepers on it pretty early, then they come off. They need this to need pick to up some turn. Over. I think there they want to be on it for now. weight. There now comes the curl. Sweeping. They've they got the yellow stone. They punch without. it straight back and All out the way the back. Out. Bruce is going to go for the taking out the shot that just came down and try and roll on the button behind a lot of cover there. Yeah, I don't mind this. I think just removing a red stone from wherever you can, getting one in the house is a good play here. I almost wouldn't even mind just peeling the guard then. 
because at the end, he does have the hammer. It doesn't really matter where the Reds are sitting as long as he has a draw. Sounds like he's got a calling for his sweepers to be on it all the up. Oh, he just called him off there. He's going to touch this red. Not going to get it on the inside of it, though. Moves it all the way out. Clear it out, basically pretty similar to the setup that we saw three stones ago. He's trading off the uh, stone that was in the eight foot is working its way further out. It's in the 12 foot now. Do you take this out as your sitting hammer? Uh, or do you try and just leave more stones to try and clog up the middle, try and prevent a late draw by Bruce here? Looks like the question that yeah, Jackie was thinking about. Looks like she has decided to go for a center line guard just to try and make things as difficult as she can since she shot raw. Yeah, I don't mind a peel on the yellow just to leave just your one in the center and your guard is the only two in play. Uh, I don't mind a hit and try to roll in. I think a center guard is fine to guard your shot rock. And I think a heavy Ooh. guard to either come into like the top 12 and freeze or tap your stone back to the forefoot. Also a good shot. That's going to be fine, though. Good center line guard right there, guarding up that shot yep. rock. Bruce has no choice right here but to try and clear that out. Once again, we see nice shot take it out. We see Harvey with his big backswing. Definitely bringing the peel weight here. Sweeping right away. Sweeping harder now. He's going to hit the higher of the two reds. And it's it is going to leave play. Spins out. So the center line guard is still there. So I'd imagine that. I think with the amount that that was turning, I think they almost maybe should have left it alone to see if it curl over enough to make the double peel. But not a bad result there. It does leave red sitting shot under a guard. But it can be gotten to. They can either just crash the guard back hard or maybe they can bend around. And with actually the whole four foot zone open, they can just draw around too. Yeah. It doesn't actually matter think, how many points Jackie's yellow gets here if they get any at all. Yeah, I think Jackie will probably try and prevent a draw. Um, it's like yeah, she's going for a just right of center line guard. She's pointing at what would be about a three just shy of a four. I don't know if she would want a biter here. Um, kind of surprised she's not going for a little bit wider to prevent a draw around that stone. Bruce doesn't, Bruce really just needs to draw anywhere deep in the eight foot. So yeah. he doesn't have to get too close. No, he doesn't. He, he, I was gonna say he just has to get close to the four foot, but he really just has to be convincingly off of the 12 foot. The redstone is shot, but arguably still touching the 12-foot circle there. So he just has to make sure he is obviously not touching the blue. And I like either I like a guard either side. Here is again as I would I would think about maybe just peeling the yellow um, to take away that option of the in-off and making it making uh, Bruce throw the draw. Looks like this is going to be narrow, a little late to start sweeping it straight. It's going to be real, really clustered here in the center. If she can get a tick here. Oh, just the tiniest little bit of a rub. It didn't actually move the guard that was already there. So they've got that shot rock really well guarded. Although Bruce really just looks like he's looking at just drawing in behind cover into the forefoot behind all of these. Yeah. And this isn't bad because he basically has the same shot twice. If he throws the draw and is either heavy or light, he'll know what he needs to do in the second time. And if he throws it and makes it and they take it out, he just has to make the same shot Although again. Although on the sixth then he had that great draw with his first shot that he just needed to repeat to take two. And he came up a little light on that second shot. That is true. That was the one that uh, all the sweepers were on, just yeah, trying to drag it as deep as they the could. the whole way. Yeah. But for right now, he wants to make the first shot. If he can out count this red stone, it'll put all the pressure on Jackie Temple here to, to take it out. 
If she can't do that, then she doesn't even need to worry about the hammer. So you have to think you're happy with, you'd rather be back house instead of leaving it light as a guard to make it more difficult for your last shot. That it is looks true. Like you would definitely want to light. leave yourself some backing. Looks like the ice has Going slowed down a bit as we progress through the game here. Just, oh, finishing it off hard. Just out counts they, Jackie wow. Temple here. They, so all, all the effort by the sweepers in that one to If to that was the that hammer, that rock. would have been the winning shot. But we've got one more for each skip. So Jackie now needs to hit that out, and if she can for the hit it just to the side of the nose, she'll also roll, you know, just, if she can roll outside, you know, a foot or so, it'll make it real a really small window. Oh, looks like she's looking for a run back here. Instead of a hack weight curl, it might not be curling too much on that line. So just a shout out and a thank you to the 15 people still with us here. Uh, you, you saw our game on B, wasn't the closest game. Our games on A and D weren't all that close. This one didn't look like it was. You stuck around, you saw the four ender in the seventh. And we've got two skips rocks coming that are probably the most important skips rocks of the tournament so far. Time being out. that this is only the second draw. Timeout called here by Jackie Temple as she brings her whole team in to discuss this shot. And as I shout out to the 15 people staying and watching, one leaves and we're down to 14. So whoever that guy was, I don't know what you're doing now. I think, I think she had to work tomorrow morning. Oh, okay, that's fair. I have to work tomorrow morning myself. But to watch the whole game right up to this point and then be like, oh, I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just had to refresh their web browser. They'll be back in a minute. Some deliberation from Jackie here. Looks like they might be still making, still asking a lot of questions here. The vice, not sure where to put the broom. He's got Looks it like down. she is taught. I couldn't tell. It looked like from that motion, they might be looking at a hit and roll or a tap and roll off of that Yellowstone in the 12 foot. Yeah, that's definitely there. And I, I was talking about it earlier as peeling that yellow out as an earlier shot to take this little wick off away from Bruce. Um, so she may basically be just going for the straight draw, knowing that if she touches the yellow on the inside, she can use that to roll the center. Sweepers are on hard. This is, looks like it looks might be light, light all the way. Maybe a two or a three guard at best. Looking more like a one here. Yeah, no, just it's gonna get gets back to, to the two. two. It's a good center line guard there, but not what you're looking for with your. Not what you're looking for, and Bruce rock. with the hammer still already lying shot. And there's that's a shake. gonna be the game. Makes it. Bruce doesn't have to throw the hammer. He gets his one eight, and six, wins the Bruce game. Black over Jackie Temple. Uh, so that's our last game of this, the second draw of the 13th annual Cherry Blossom Bonspiel here at the Potomac Curling Club at the National Capital Curling Center. To recap that last draw, on sheet A we saw Rick Balala with the team from Chesapeake and Plainfield defeat Travis Hamilton's team from the Curling Club of Virginia. We saw Rich Ashford's rink out of the Pittsburgh Curling Club beat Jackie Barris's club from the Wauwatosa Curling Club from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Uh, we saw Bruce Black there, just there on sheet C, 
uh, and his team out of the Potomac Club beat Jackie Temple from, I believe, Columbus, just based on the fact that one of them is wearing a Columbus T-shirt. Uh, and we saw Steve Buffington out of the Pittsburgh Curling Club defeat F.L. Etlin out of the Potomac Club on sheet D. Uh, that's the end of this draw, and that is the end of our action for today. We'll be back, not us specifically, but we meaning our club and our bond spiel, will be back at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, I believe. I believe that's right. To pick up with the rest of the action of our cherry blossom bond spiel. We're going to be here all day tomorrow, all day Saturday. Two draws on Sunday with our finals culminating at noon. Uh, we hope you s come back and watch some more. If you're in the area, I hope you drop in, watch some games in person, enjoy some of our wonderful food, our nice bar, our great company. Uh, I'm going to stop talking and let some of these other guys say something before we're done. Thanks for uh, tuning in for our webcast tonight. Hopefully you guys saw some good curling. Had some good announcing. Didn't have to see any bad announcers. This is John Lawrence. I've been the operator tonight. Good night. <laughs>